So we're going to start off with uh, community forum. Anybody uh, signed in to speak? Yeah. Anybody want to speak to us this evening? Okay, we are moving on to the rest of the board meeting. Order. Since a uh, vote was not taken, 
uh, it doesn't get reported that way. Uh, and I just point out that that meeting, this meeting, the 12th, was uh, videotaped. So there is a natural record of that conversation. You can see with these minutes, I think she's just stated that it, it wasn't well taken. So. so <clears throat> I suggested that it be put in there, and Ron did go back and watch the tape. There's the video record, and you're the one that actually said so. It's two yeah. to two, so that's why I put it in there. But there is another record. That's it. Any other thoughts? Are we questioning whether this is something to do with what's under Andrew? Is that the no? The housing was proposed with correct minutes. Um, I would like the statement that says the board was split two to two with the continent and the last hour 10 times to instruct us. That would be what I would suggest. That consistent with past practice? I think we should leave that. Total accounts payable for 
$293.87 of disbursements for one million three hundred twenty-five thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars and sixty-seven cents. Second that. We have a motion of second. Questions, discussion. And all in favor of approving the minutes report and quick listing, say aye. 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 All at the same time, motions carried. We're on to delegations to be heard. We have asked delegations to be heard. We're on to administrative report and actions. We've got donations. Yep. So we have two donations this evening. Um, thank you to Mrs. Helbig, who organized the uh, concession stand for the uh, music department. Spring concerts again, two hundred dollars, and the proceeds would go to the uh, to the music department. Then we have the Black Log Giving Fund, uh, fund donated three hundred dollars to Merton Primary School. Uh, this grant was made on the capital standard insurance company to uh, Merton Primary School. So thank you very much to uh, Mrs. Talbot and uh, the Black Log Giving Fund. So just looking for a motion to approve the donations as presented. Motion. Motion to approve donations as presented. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. All in favor of them say aye. 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 So we'll send time. Motion is carried. We're on to personnel actions. Okay, so start out with the resignations. Resignations. So we have uh, two resignations this evening. Now one is from Jeff Rosefic. Okay, thank you very much for your three years. Um, and then a late addition was Kelsey Cobbler. Uh, speech Received her letter in the board packet as well as I'm trying to look at that later this afternoon. So, uh, just looking for a motion to accept the letters of resignation by Jen Sezik and that Kelsey Cobbler has presented. Jen, we don't want to accept that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, motion to approve uh, the, the, the letters of resignation from Jen Sezik and Kelsey Cobbler. Okay, we have a motion and a second discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. We're on to the letter of appointment and contract next. Yeah. So we have uh, two contracts and uh, or one contract <coughs> and two letters of appointment this evening. Uh, Jessica Schrader. Uh, for uh, to replace Megan and Callback in our math department at Burnt Intermediate School for our individual teacher contract as presented. And then uh, Michelle Sheepkin to replace Mrs. Smith at Burnt Primary School. Um, and then ultimately, we also are, the administration is recommending the corresponding compensation rule with Tanya Kiyoke. Um, so again, another administrative assistant with the district as well. So uh, just to kind of keep that compensation in mind. So just looking for a uh, board uh, motion to approve uh, just the Schrader's individual teaching contract, Michelle Sheepkin, and Tiny Floyd Kiyoke's uh, letter of appointment as presented. Second. Okay, with a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of this appointment and contract say aye. Aye. All the same sign. Motion's carried. We have that one, two. Sheep. Okay, we're on to information. Superintendent? Not good. Okay, we're on to new business. Uh, discussion of hot flags and choice coaching and consulting. We've had a chance to look at the uh, engagement agreement uh, that I provided. This is a follow up from last uh, conversation that was made. Uh, just as kind of uh, some feedback that was shared. And then again, I did meet with Krista. And I think Krista Morrissey is here uh, as well. I just invited her to come in and answer any questions uh, or clarify anything that the board might have questions about. So I'll just kind of turn it over to the board. Uh, 
I think we can do a discussion. We can discussion. And they talk to our design whether we want to have action on that or not. I'll start. Chris, I thank you for everything that you put together uh, for us. Um, I just don't see this as a good spend of uh, community dollars. Our board changes yearly. Um, we just implemented policy 162, which is new board member orientation. Um, so I feel like we have put some things in place um, to become a better board. And it just, even at $10,000, I just don't see this as a good alternative. I did um, go ahead and purchase all of us, and I see them, a copy of Robert's Rules. I hear it thrown around quite a bit. I don't necessarily know all about it. So me personally, I'm going to take this and read it. If we can have a discussion, an open discussion about it. Um, you also hear board norms thrown around a little bit. What does that mean? Can we have an open discussion about that? To me, there's less expensive options that we can do as a group to come together. So I think uh, like what an option you are at the since this would be for the whole board and for you're not a part of our discussion we discussed the last time. Is this something that we would be interested in doing? This is training for the whole board, so it's not of interest to him. So we would probably have a private discussion. So in reading the first part, I think this is something that would be really useful to us. However, I don't know if we're in a position as a board to fully utilize it because if everybody's not in, it's hard to get in there. Absolutely. Do professional development for our staff. And, uh, <clears throat> it's a long time. Uh, never have done something like this before, but I think it is time that uh, we do this. We need to have a facilitator that's. Somebody that's not at this table. If we were just to sit down and have a discussion about norms <coughs> and uh, behavior, I don't think we would accomplish it. So that's why I feel like we should probably. Um, and again, Echo, thank you for your, your work and putting this formal together. Um, I say before we quit on an idea of trying as adults to sit down and have a conversation and saying it won't work, I think we should at least attempt to make it work, try to make it work. So that if it doesn't work, we can check the box uh, and say that it wasn't uh, beneficial to anybody. Uh, and so I'd rather, uh, uh, I'd rather us sit down and as a group and have a working session talking about uh, what's important to us for communication with each other, uh, what's, uh, uh, what's important for uh, board norms, and, and what, what is a board norm, and, and how, how are we define it? Uh, to me, I would be worth uh, investing an hour or two hours of uh, five plus time to get together and try that before saying it's not going to work. I just feel that we have to uh, facilitate our outside, outside of the people at the table. I would agree that looks likely to be more successful. I'm willing to try this way. I do think we'll appreciate it, the board orientation. It doesn't really address how we talk to one another. So I think it helped me a lot in knowing how things work, which is helpful to a new member, but as the board working together, I think no board orientation necessarily covers that. 
I agree this would be most successful if this is the, I would be happy to start there. I would like to then suggest that we do Kristen's proposal. Because if this doesn't work, I might accept it. But I, I really hope it does. I always hope that, that we come together and work well together. If we determine that we need more help, I would like to be able to return to this proposal. Any other discussion? I also would like to have Nicole highlight some of the policy things we read policy 153 as well, which is a self evaluation tool, which is uh, coming up here in September or October. So that'll be a separate meeting uh, specifically to talk about that. Uh, and that's about inner workings of board member, board member, and then how that each individual board member is contributing as well, too. So uh, there's another thing to kind of look forward to. Yeah, so we kind of think about the policy says September, October. So in fact, we did want to have some, some more conversations moving forward about the tools, norms, communication, whatever it might be uh, ahead of that self-evaluation tool. I just think that we have recently put some new things into place. They haven't, to your point, gone all the way through yet. Um, at the end of the day, I guess for communication, I don't know what other better way to say it than we're all adults and should be able to communicate. None of us are perfect. Um, we all make mistakes. Owning them, being able to change from them, learning from them is key. Wait, I agree with all of that. As someone who does this for a living, adults need help too, <laughs> uh, most certainly. And the community pretty clearly asks us to learn to work together. If we can do that on our own, I really would ask for that. As if we need help, then I would hope that we would ask for and get help that we need so that we meet the community standard of working well together. I to come back to what Dean said again. We, we, we develop teachers, we develop instructional administrators. Again, I feel strongly that your, your own personal, whether that be focused around either working together or other school board related professional development opportunities, if anything ever. Comes across and take it to you, and uh, I think it's a big opportunity to help you make as well. So. And I agree with that 100%. Yep. But our goal of teachers is to keep them longer than a three year term. Yep. So, are we, has this been done in the past? No. no my in nine months, two seats are up again. So, we spent 10,000 now. Are we committing to spend 10,000 next year and the following year <clears throat> as the board continues to evolve? We usually actually create some of those board norms. We have people coming in who are adopting some of those norms. So if we are able to set those and work with things, but they would not be oh. receiving the same professional development that the five of us receive. I think we look to see if you needed help as you go. Any yeah, other discussion? Well, I think this dies. Thank it's you. dead. What? It's dead. It's dead. Sorry, but I really think appreciate it. There's no apology. And I'm sincere about wanting to return to this if we are, find ourselves that we are not able to get what we would like to get on our own. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, we're on to item B, that's the 6603 plan for the Arrowhead. Yeah, so um, like years past, um, you'll see a proposed 6603 for a geometry section from uh, Arrowhead High School. And this year, uh, we, uh, we are partnering with the only Bolton. Uh, Mr. Hessler has retired from Arrowhead, and uh, Arrowhead was able to secure uh, Mrs. Bolton. So the administration recommends the board make a motion to approve. The 6603 agreement with the Arrowhead High School to share the only Fulton as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Brought me through my gate there. From the scheduling standpoint, this all works with regards to when Arrowhead has overtime and there's been the reschedule hours. That's how we. Managed to make this work. Correct. Or is this early or how, how does this? Sure. Do we know now or is that in process? No, we know now. Uh, the math section, uh, when we work with Arrowhead and say, hey, we really need uh, a math 
the geometry section, say, right around one third, one thirty to two third. So Arrowhead goes and solicits some uh, anybody who might be interested in their math department. And then if they do find that someone who is interested, they then work with their own individual schedule to make sure that they are able to be meeting from their Arrowhead duties at, say, one o'clock to be able to transition here successfully at one thirty to two thirty two as well. So if Arrowhead, again, we start this planning process right around December with Arrowhead. And if Arrowhead would say, hey, do you really like it at two thirty? Or quarter to three, we're able to finagle and maneuver. So it really is a conjunction collaboration with the program. Just in case we have enough students that we need to accept. Correct. Yeah, correct. Instead of sending our students. Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, they come on, they, they stay here, and then I think we've got a section of about 17 or 18. And, uh, and then some other feeders <laughs> have already kind of reached out to say, hey, is there any openings? Because they're kind of thinking that, you know, instead of sending his arrowhead, the opportunity that might be here too as well. So we can do to have those conversations. Have we had to ask about other theater schools down here? No, because ultimately kind of what Andrew was asking, the schedule sometimes doesn't work. Yeah. So any other discussion? Then I'll bear with 66 plus three is there any other say aye. Aye. Both stay in Motion carries. <coughs> We're on to possible reorganization for six and one reps. Can I turn this over to you? So I would like to resign from this position. It's a larger time commitment than I'm able to do my best at or give it my best. So I would like to know who would like to take this on. <laughs> It's heavy in meetings, um, in person, evenings, um, once twice a month. I just, I'm not, I'm not doing it justice, and I don't like to do things only half far. So, if somebody else would be interested in taking that over, Would you like to try? Go ahead. You never had any reporting back from that in the past, have you? Not officially. It's always been up to the individual who has held the seat to be as active or inactive as they would wish. So that's what it's been. Is it been not an act? Is it mandated that we be a part of it? I do believe so. We are required for CISA because we do we, we are required to have a CISA delegate because they do take some some votes and some actions. Uh, there's some formal meetings and adoptions. So I would have to double check, but I'm about 95 percent sure that yes. Yeah. Can we table this and have you double check? See what okay. we have to. So yeah, I guess I would want a is is it mandated? <laughs> Legally binding that we have to do it. B, if we're, if it is and we and we don't have participation, what are the ramifications? Uh, C, is it, uh, are there meetings recorded? Can they be recorded so that people can, you know, view it? So that uh, at their own time, the scheduling doesn't work out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know which is one of the other things they do is use the representative to send stuff out so that somebody has it, maybe they send that to somebody. Typically, it is to both superintendent and school board member. Like we get the same email, probably there's a delegation meeting coming up here. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, you guys are on the same list, sir. Is there something they, they do um, make use of doodle polls to try and get majority? Um, it's just it's not working. I gave it up. The difference between me and the other few schools, as she said, is Burton holds a seat on the board of control for six or one. So there are you sit at the board of control. That's the place. 
Which is what they're trying to get me to do. Exactly. Can't, can I? So that's what makes Merton different than Storm Banks and Civil War. And why are we hopeless? And not I was elected in that position last year. And this is uh, how, how, how long was that position? Three years. We hold that for three years. So we're two years left. We're on the second year. Yeah, we're on the second year. So, so no, so no one wants to do it for you anyways. We're trying to do it. Yeah, I'll see you when I see you again. Yeah, yeah. 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 So without a board fit, if you were to take up the board seat, would that lessen what we're being asked to do? Well, I'm sorry. It's a tough one. And if that was the case, now it's all making sense. <laughs> what did you guys say? I don't know what it, I, I have no idea that. that. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. Yeah. I didn't even know what it was. Okay. So we're going to table this. Yep. And I'm going to reach out to uh, Ms. Doyle. Yep. So we're soon in. Yep. Yep. Okay. We're on to approved technology fee policy for the 23 24 school year. So this is something that has gone through the committee and we had our first read. Um, this has been talked about probably since early February. Again. Would be the final read if the administration is ready to report the motion to approve policy 656.1, the device fee policy that is recommended by the policy committee provided to the full board for its consideration and action effective July 1st. Motion to approve policy 656.1, the device fee policy that has been recommended by the policy committee. And provided to the full board for its consideration and action effective July 1st, 2024. Okay, the motion is in second. Discussion. Are we replacing the policy? No, we are not. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? I'd like to clarify. So this year, this next year, that everybody starts at six night right after the day that this year's been triggered. Everybody starts this year. No, but the, the policy would say is, is in grades two through four, we are going to be setting a technology fee. And then starting in grade five this year, 2023, grade five, they would be issued a district Chromebook right. that the student would use. Uh, again, we're recommending $40 to be the fee. Uh, again, through our school fee process, yearly we would take a look at and reassess what that fee would be. So this is just really impacting our. Incoming advisory for the grade. So six, seven, and eight, no? Are not six, seven, and eight have the opportunity to participate if they participate for the six, six, seven, and eight grade. Then they They can they can jump into our least of all program. Yep. Not this least specific. Least of all. So. Or least of all. So least of all. not this one. Correct. Yep. So who it affects our primary school kids? <laughs> Incoming six, seven, and eighth graders. It's the old program. Right. Right. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor, then say aye. 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 Carry. Uh, school fees. Yeah. So this year, again, uh, because of this, you know, after the device policy fee, you'll see that uh, again, we are recommending grades two through four would be $25, and fifth grade now would be $40. Um, also included in this year's fees, you'll see an increase of $5 uh, across the board, as well as uh, other school fees for, for art and electives. Uh, again, a $5 increase to our athletic fee. As well, so I think the chart's been there. It has gone through the finance committee as well. So the administration and finance committee recommend the board make a motion to approve the 2324 school fees and month prices as presented. Okay, so we Motion and second on the eighth March sheet. Any discussion? 
just a reminder of the who contract is multi year. And they come to us every year. Correct. Yep. We're in year two. We're in year two of a. Uh, yep, and if you take a look at uh, we take a look at our fund balance, we take a look at food prices, we take a look at labor prices to then set the lunch price, which ultimately may have calculates into uh, the lunch price per meal. So yeah, it's price matching. So that's great. Okay. You'll see that their F and modifications and those are all noted in the uh, the document for proposed changes. So again, this is it would be the final reading. to approve the Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Statement, just to clarify everything that the administration wanted with regards to paying for a sub, various other things has been struck. It's been struck. It has been struck. So yep. nothing's, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. It's the same policy as it was this year. Let, Let us know in advance. Yep. I do have a couple of questions. So in section 1.1, um, can we get the page numbers to the yeah, one point, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, that's, that's for sure. Um under provisions applicable to all employees, um under it's not letting me open. Can you Could you click on about this handbook? It's right under definitions in your index. The list of changes. Yep. Okay. So for seasonal employees, it says first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Has that all been updated? Because we discussed under 1.1. And then 1.2 definitions. Yeah, the links are disabled. So then there's a chart for second, third, fourth, fifth year of service. With rates of pay. Um, service. No, that would have to be updated. We can update that. Okay, so then bear with me here, guys. So then um, 12.1b. Personal days provided for support staff. Section twelve, personal leave. Um, three leave. Uh, section twelve. Okay. So twelve point one B, personal days. Provided for support staff. There's A, B, C, D. Okay. 
we want section 12 correct form of each form. Okay, well, first of all, okay, I got it. Your question is? Um, for C, it says an employee shall receive $10 per hour payable by July 6th if the employee does not use his or her personal leave day in the contract year. That's almost giving them an incentive to take days off because they're essentially making less money. Yes. So can we discuss that or does it have to go through policy or? We can discuss it as a committee. We can discuss it now if that's the, if it's the will of the board. It's, uh, can we do this very similar to our teaching staff too as well? Again, the handbook that I highlighted to you your client utilize uh, one of your personal days, it would be compensated at the daily salary. So I thought I'd read that question the last week. This was going to be like overall discussion about changing our package of whether, you know, and looking at whether it's PTO right. versus sick day versus personal day, but that it, and then looking at that as well. I agree. It just it's final reading approval of the twenty three twenty four handbook for action. So I just want to throw out some. Okay. So we but we can just to clarify if the policy committee wanted to review this in July or August and then you get the recommended change, we could, the policy committee could do that at any point during the school year. This doesn't lock in for the year. And we can never touch it again. Correct. Correct. Yeah, you could revisit this. I would say that if it's a topic that has not been fully discussed or, or vetted through the policy committee, um, is that way I echo what Amy was highlighting to us is I think that it's going to be part of a bigger overhaul of paid time off compensation as we take a look at moving into um, strategic planning for employee compensation too as well. But um, but to dovetail Nicole, if we wanted to readdress this because this would be something that would go into effect. Literally in uh, June of 2024, if you want to take another look at that compensation. Say that again. Not July 1st of 20. Oh. Well, but again, that support staff member who has not used their personal time, they have until June 1st because we don't pay that out until the June 20th payroll of 2024. So the language that you're talking about, uh, if somebody they have the rest of the school year, they would have the school year up till June 1st to use a personal day. If they do not, then we compensate that on June 20th, 2024. So, and what Andrew was so you're, what you're, you're saying is we got a year to figure this out before, figure out before we even pay anybody. Okay. Uh, that's Fair what you're enough. saying. Like one year from now is when, if right. someone didn't use it in the next school year, yeah. that's, when, that's what you're saying. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, policy team wanted to hit this up in September. They certainly could because, again, we wouldn't do anything with it until June 20th. Okay. Any discussion was something with that larger conversation about the time off and that sort of thing. And so this would be a part of that as well. Okay, correct. For, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. For any yeah. unaccrued paid time off. Yeah. Also looking yeah. at benefits as a whole, yes. what we offer, what we don't offer. You know. So I'll wrap up some of my questions. So then in here it says the number of staff meetings shall be established by the board. And that's for before and after meetings, before and after school meetings. Why would the board? Because that's part of our professional development plan that the board is, is in theory, uh, legally required to approve. Okay. Um, and you guys are approving that a little bit later. But again, that also, there's the aspect in there that is subject to change because of the administration and they take that over. Do you? Yep. This is very exciting. <laughs> Sorry, um, 7.4 under section seven. Again, this will come back to wage compensation and expenses. It says um, 7.4 payment for other duties. Employees who perform other hourly duties outside of their regularly scheduled assignment shall submit hours for payment on an hourly timesheet. Um, so I'm assuming that's reset. Do any things like that? Is that all employees and they all get the same pay? No, it depends on what, what employee group you are in. Uh, okay. A teacher covering for a teacher would be compensated differently than an instructional assistant covering for another 
instructional assistant. Mm -hmm. um, there is a wage difference if an instructional assistant has a license, uh, a substitute teacher license, they are compensated differently. Uh, so, depending on which work category you are, uh, you get compensated. Like, for instance, administration is wage differently. So, it depends on which category you are, you fall. Yeah, but I don't have seven point one two in the yeah, table. Section, there's, there's multiple section seven. Section. Seven. That's the difference. Yeah. Wage. I'm in section seven. Compensation yes. and expense reimbursement applicable to all the sector employees. I'm C. Mileage reimbursement and meal reimbursement for me. Alright, page number. Payment of it's in section seven. Section uh, word one eight one eight. You, this, these are for letters of appointment individuals who have without individual contracts. So it's in, there's different sections of the handbook. So what Nicole is highlighting is individuals without individual contracts. So you want to use a letter of appointment. No, the table of contents again. Part one, like you're referencing section seven, one point one, seven point two. There's that references all employees, and then you get down into some more detail because section three covers individuals who do not have an individual contract. Okay, I have a page on that 20. The table of contents part is still confusing. This is part three. I guess we need to have a larger discussion. So when we do the next policy meeting, and then can we have the link for the 2324? Yeah, when it gets updated. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions for the phone? I do, but it'll fall under a larger discussion. So I'll just save my notes. So you'd like this to go back to the committee then, not to the I'm committee okay. board. I'm okay so with the changes. We need to approve something this evening so we have to do work. Right, right. But I'm mean, happy to hear of this item you're asking about, except for that uh, where you have to update. I guess where I'm confused is it says, please see 2223 handbook, which is fine. Proposed changes for the 23-24 handbook, which we don't have access to the 23-24 handbook, and not all the links are working, but if this is all the changes that we're approving, the proposed is that what we're Correct. Yeah, yeah. then I'm okay with that, but I do feel like this needs to be revisited. Okay. I have one other question. The proposed changes. I'm looking at... 8A provisions applicable to all employees. So, this is between the two stricken uh, sections. There's the unpaid leaves and special circumstances and the 4B, the part that is still there is unexcused unpaid days or excessive use of unpaid days are subject to disciplinary action up to and including dismissal. What is the definition for excessive use? Is? Excessive use would be as it's just a continued not coming to work, basically, not the way is there a point at which you call that after X amount of time? We would we would highlight we would sit down with the employee to talk about hey what's what's happening because if it's excessive we would then fall underneath the FMLA situation and that's really what we would be referring to. So if we're just going to say we're going to come and say I'm going to take every Friday off for the next twelve weeks, that is when we would need to be excessive. So again, we work with the employee and then have some uh, conversation around that, and then ultimately try to set some parameters around unpaid leave. We've never had an issue with that because typically the conversations we're having with people is to say, um, I have two days, but you know, I need to compete with my, my child who's on spring break and that doesn't line up with ours and stuff like that too as well. So um, it would be those individuals who are what we would say completely abusing it, like hey, I'm gonna take every Friday off for the next six, seven weeks because I can't because I have to. And again, just to clarify, the letter, the letter of appointment and the 
teacher contracts. But those are all the, the work day days are all set in advance. The school calendar is set in advance. So you know there's a moral contract there of between between two parties of like you know for for a fair pay wage which we all agree to you know these are the days we need you to work. So my question is less that and more what if Dean and I have a different what if the amount of this being excessive is different for the two of us? So I think it's three, you think it's ten. Right. And so I get called in for a conversation because I've had three and you get called for a conversation because you have ten. I wonder if you would negotiate. We would have to be consistent with how we're enforcing that. We certainly don't. Right. Yep. So you feel it should be written out? I don't know if it should be written out. I don't feel like I know enough about the circumstances. The flexibility that I do think is important for staff for a conversation to be able to say uh, unforeseen circumstance or severe circumstance. Them. So I don't want to box us in for that, but I also don't want us to open ourselves up to legal issues and terminate someone for excessive use and say, but this person did X and they didn't get terminated. I don't know the answer to that, but those are my What we would say is this consistency will be applied. Um, and that's kind of why we were, kind of, we were unable to, we couldn't have those conversations because, you know, we could pull somebody in because of they have two or three days off. Again, it does take, we have to say yes to these. We do. They, they, they tell us a week in advance. We say yes, so we're going to take care of that issue as well. So we, we'll continue to work with them as we have in the past and look forward to uh, the opportunity to a larger conversation globally around PTO compensation benefits. Any other discussion? So, the record is clear. We have, do have some changes to make. make. And perhaps it would be right if you brought up, we're going to go back to committee. Larger discussion. Larger discussion. Mm -hmm. Anybody understand? But we're also approving this document for the right. results change document or right. joining them. Correct. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. It makes more sense. I was just going to say that. Yeah. So we're in the discussion part. I think we're all clear on what's being asked. If you want to discuss that, all in favor then say aye. 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 All the same time. This is carried. We're on to G approval of the 23-24 teacher contracts. Just, um, you will see a text list of the teacher contracts that were uh, issued to our staff. Uh, and obviously the full-time ones are, you know, they were not done approved, so they didn't move forward. And you also see our part-time staff that move forward too as well. Um, on this list though, I mean, it was not updated uh, with uh, Kelsey Copper is still on this list. And we did accept her resignation. So, uh, the administration recommended the board approve the 2324 teacher contract as presented, striking out the Kelsey topic. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Questions? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the teacher contracts for the Twenty-four square. Say aye. 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 For the same time. Okay, we are on to the district administrator contract. So it's just a formal approval. It's a little bit more. That's all the numbers that we can do. Do it I move the approved the administrator contract contract as presented. Perfect. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Of course, we also have. Okay. Is there any discussion? All in favor then? Roll call. Uh, Troy? Abstain. Roll. Aye. Anna? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. Dean? Aye. Passes for. Okay, we're on to the administrator and specialist salaries. So, uh, we have several teachers, uh, and then the next phase here would be for the administrative specialist. Uh, we also have several our support staff, too. So, um, these uh, were presented in a closed session at June 12th. So, again, the administration is recommending the board make a motion to approve the administrative and specialist salaries uh, for 23 24 as presented. So, We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Troy. Roll. Aye. Andrew. Aye. Rebecca. Aye. Dean. Aye. Pass for the one. Okay, we are on to the six eight English language art curriculum. A big thank you to uh, our curriculum team, Maria, and uh, her assistant uh, literacy review team. Uh, we did present this to the Student Achievement Committee uh, in May, as well as a quote for the board for a first draft and a first review. So uh, there has been no changes to that document uh, that has been made, which is now being asked to be approved this evening. So the administration is recommending the board make motion to approve the proposed six or eight English language arts curriculum as presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Maria, any additional feedback since the survey closed? No. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? All in favor then say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We're on to the policy 187, public participation at board meetings. So again, this has been uh, discussed quite a bit this past school year. Uh, the administration is recommending the board make a motion to delete policy 1005, to replace policy 1005 with policy 187, public participation at board meetings. That has been recommended by the policy committee provided to the full board for its consideration and action effective July 1st, Otherwise, 
discussion was based on what we did. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor then say aye. Aye. One minute at a time. Okay, we are to first draft reading of the student handbooks. So uh, you will see that. Uh, Again, very small tweak changes to uh, the communication involving some student absences, two families after days five and eight. Uh, these were reviewed by our administrative team and our, our principals. And this is a recommendation just uh, kind of tweaking that and then rolling the rest of them back and forward to the country for the school. Ron, normally this would flow through the policy given some light changes here. The administration is asking not to flow through the policy and just go to the full board directly. We certainly can, uh, but yes, our recommendation would be to, given the limited change recommendations, if there were further discussions that the board wanted to have, I would recommend it to get it back to committee and we can discuss that. But uh, given the limited changes, uh, and our, we would like this to be ready to go for registration, which occurs in the middle of August, and have this ready to go. This is the first review too as well. So if there are any yeah, obvious need to change the policy or if there's some specific thing, you please feel free to reach out to myself. Um the administration to that answer. Any changes in each of them or notification after five meetings? Correct. Yep. Absences that it takes out the letter by mail and has a phone call. Has a phone call. Yeah, you can work formal feedback just uh, let the self administration come. It was just first read. Okay, we are to M group district 24 staff professional development plan. As highlighted before, it, it's required by the state statute that uh, the board does approve a professional development plan. You will see that this 2324, uh, this tentative plan was presented to the student achievement committee uh, in the May meeting. And uh, if no uh, further feedback has been shared, so we would like to uh, move forward with the motion to approve the uh, 2324 staff professional development plan framework as presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Maria, how does this compare to last year's professional development case? Um, well, we have the same amount of days. Okay. Um, how we use them, you know, is always something. I mean, actually, you approve the the days on the calendar when you approve the calendar okay um so that's and once that's approved we kind of go and develop the plan about what our focus area would be how do we you know determine what we do on what days and what time of events and that's actually what you're seeing now so i mean the days change quite a bit of what we focus on you know, there's a strong focus on mathematics next year with the new program coming in, 6-8 ELA training, um, and focus on that. And then really trying to work with making our curriculum more transparent, the intermediate staff will continue to have time to develop their units so we can post them online um, now that they kind of finished their training this year, past year. So. Yes, and those Wednesday morning meetings sometimes do move depending on what we might have going on. An example would be when we weren't sure what was going on with health insurance this year, 
we wanted to give the most up-to-date information to staff. So although that meeting was like on our schedule for earlier in April, we moved some of our building and other days up and waited until um, Dr. Russ had more information on what our what some of the changes for next school year was coming. So we do do that based off of what we need if something comes up. And I did put subject to change on the top of all these. services uh, for the last uh, four or five weeks and uh, again we have come up short right now with a permanent replacement for our business manager so um, CISA 5 does offer business services to school districts and uh, what you see in the proposal is a one day a week proposal uh, right now they're they're stretched with employees unfortunately too and again they're trying to hire more business managers for smaller school districts like ourselves who are struggling to kind of fill this role and uh, continue to kind of bring in say band-aid but uh, right now we're in the back of the so we can do this Sophie uh, Sophie Mathis Tanya um, and, and myself we've been kind of putting this all together in conjunction with you know working with the auditors and banks and things like that too making sure that uh, things are in control for our business office um, the one piece that we really need this support on right now is our audit Okay. Uh, I don't have the skill set or the expertise at Skyward, and nor should I. You know, somebody else needs to run all those reports, and uh, CISA 5 would be uh, really the, the point person to getting that preliminary audit ready and ultimately doing all the findings for the audit. The human resource activities from the insurances, risk management, day to day operations are continuing to occur. Uh, but this contract would be, and they understand that it's more big picture business manager thing that any kind of a financial person can do. Right now, to kind of get us through the summer months to get us rolling. Um, I would like to engage the board in a larger discussion about what the next steps are and how we need to move forward with this. Um, ultimately, this will help kind of play into that about, hey, can we, you know, what can we do? One day a week, two days a week, three days a week, full time. Again, just kind of reassessing that entire position, uh, given some of the skill sets that we have around the district, but ultimately how we can continue to uh, pull together other district resources for us to increase our sizes too. So, so. Uh, but right now, I feel this is our best, um, my best recommendation for the information that we have to make sure that we are meeting all the mandatory reporting things that are required uh, per state statutes as well as our offers to make sure that they're successful with the audit. Double check our next question. No, we can uh, I'm just using our calculator. Here. It was posted as such so okay. yeah, questions. So I just want to make sure given our audit, they have enough time to give us when we need those things. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right now they are they are very uh, we have a preliminary audit the last 17. We have uh, ahead of this meeting, we have already kind of connected our auditor with uh, the prospective business manager who we would be working with if in fact this was going forward. So uh, that work has already begun. And again, these people are used to this is what they do. They go into a school district, figure out, pull the report through <coughs> Skyward, and away they go. The one piece that I wish we did have right now, we do not have a lot of online access for Skyward. So uh, ideally people, when we start talking about remoting in, there are only certain things that that person can do from afar. So they would have to come onto campus to access our servers, our information, and that's how Skyward is set up right now. As part of a larger discussion, Jim and I have already talked about this, is, is there is a migration that can happen from internal to more cloud-based. 
which allows the remote access for somebody to access, um, you know, with the appropriate access and checks and balances, being able to work remotely. So there's good security here. Oh, for sure, good security. Yeah, and it's again other school. I don't think it. Maybe 50 50 have migrated to online yet, or not even that much? Not even that, not even that much because mm -hmm. it is an extensive process. Mm -hmm. online for cloud? Yeah, more or less. There's a new version of Skyward that is completely cloud based, that's completely hosted. Um, Merton, along with a certain number of other districts, have for years chosen to host it ourselves, um, which also restricts the access to that financial side that Ron is talking about. Um, through the chain of different business managers here, that's kind of been what we've decided to stay with for the time being, but it is coming down the road where you need to move to this because this is what it's going to be. Um, so it's a matter of time. Um, the migration process is depending on what your financial staff in the, in, in the district looks like, could be six months, could be a year, could be two years. Depends on how fast your people can move in doing it. Um, and what I mean by moving and doing it is, you know, making sure that the numbers migrate from here to there correctly and, and just checking all those records. So it, it truly depends, but I have reached out to our Skyward people to at least have those initial talks to figure out how long, what we need to do, what they need to do, and just go from there. Yeah, the cloud base, the only thing that is not cloud based or not being able to remote is our money. Yep. So our human resource aspects, as well as our student management system, those are all secure that we can remote into those at any place. It truly is the financial side of the organization as well. So. And aside from obviously the need for the audit, the immediate need for that, these costs like this quote, you were happy with this? No. Is this what you expected? No, no. It's expensive. It is really expensive. So that's why I would like to have a I'm conversation. A <laughs> but is it just like hiring a consultant? You are hiring somebody, and again, this is what to, to me. I would like to get us through the audit uh, for the next two months and have a more permanent plan. And this is where we're working with the board to say, hey, there are some other options out there that we can possibly pursue that are not for literally nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, completely. Agreed. So this fifty days is just to get through the audit. No, no. no this this is contract. just basically when we talk about this is a year round contract. Once a week. Basically. Once a week. Because that's all they can give us right now. Yeah. That's all they can commit to. Now, does he believe that he'll have to do some he or she? I mean, I believe it's going to be they. Um, is going to be able to. He'll make sure the audit gets it up completed so it may be maybe two days a week which means you're just going to borrow some time from somebody else it's all billable hours as well um with given a 30-day notice we can terminate the contract so so we pay is, as as we go for the hours used basically correct yeah okay. exactly we find someone or come up with another arrangement we never know what to do. 30 days and that 30 days is literally four times yes four times is what that is and it says per day basis only actual days work so it's not saying he's Billing or they are billing by hours, they're billing by days. They would bill by the day. Correct. Yeah. It says partial days are covered. Partial days would be covered. So you they can, it, it's available hour. our uh, situation. Now, some of the work, though, that you will be able to do not audit related, and even maybe some of the audits that you can't do, I'm not quite sure that that side too. Um, there's some EPI reporting that has to be done by the business manager that is all accessible through online portal. Could that be that one? Correct, yeah. Like uh, EPI reporting is all done remote. Where is this gentleman if it's going to be done? Traveling from local? And so when, next question. So when you say on site, he's here at eight o'clock. It's an eight, eight hour day. It is an eight hour day. Correct. Yep. Yep. I asked that question. Travel is not included in that at the time. No, that's that's why I kind of the dollar amount is so large because there's obviously mileage reimbursement and their time to do as well. Are other schools utilizing this as well? Yes. Yep. Are we still posted? We are not posted yet. Yep, I have pulled that post. Um, 
that we need to reset it. <laughs> and again, what we're going to be posting for may look different than what it is. We just want to see how this goes. Are we waiting to repost until we have this conversation about what this looks like? Yes, or are we I, to see yeah, I would like to have a more permanent solution in place as ever post. That is my total. But September 1st, have that line ready to go, whether that's middle of September or everything. We do have, okay, and, um, you have retirees, you have different people who have, you know, come into the profession. So you're hoping to have this conversation on July 17th or before that? Oh, um, no problem. Probably July if, if, yeah, if we could pull the board for a closed session. Uh, and I will continue to give information as we go. Right, motion to approve the uh, proposed to supply agreement for business and interest. Second. Okay. Speaking with a motion and a second, is there any discussion? All in favor, then say aye. 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 So we'll say aye. Gary, thank you. Okay, we are on to additional meeting agenda items. Can I ask you about the September 12th date? Sure. How did we arrive at that? That is set at the end of the meeting a year ago. <laughs> Yeah, that's the state statute that's a big question. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Do we need to schedule the board discussion? Is that that group? Start that before the July 17th. So that we're going to go meeting at 6 and we're going to meet at 5 at that time. Not for a board workshop, it'd be a board workshop. It's not going to be more than an hour, just to say, but if you want to start with an initial hour, I think we can start with an hour and see where it goes. Okay. Okay. More like seven. It's open, right? Anybody can address it? It will be. But yeah, Anyone we should talk about how it would be an observation. Yeah, so if it would be a board workshop, communication amongst between the board members, there wouldn't be any public participation. That date works for me. I just want to toss out an idea. Are we better off instead of going for an hour, five to six, and then six into a meeting, start 4.45 to 5.45, everybody takes a breath, gets a little walk, and then we resume yeah. with yeah. our normal meeting. I have no problem with that. Okay. So I would say the 17th at 445 would be that. In this location? Here. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then closed session after four or five. Let's tentatively, because the, the July meeting should be like uh, right now we're required to, we will have an academic standards declaration that is required by state statute. And then, uh, you know, some personnel actions more than likely, but that is a pretty light one. So, um, we can tentatively schedule for a closed session, but again, that's something that can be tweaked as we go. Maybe if we have enough information there. And August 28th is our uh, the core open house. So when families are back, and things like that, and uh, this is another one that we kind of start rolling into that last uh, one meeting. That's moving. Yeah, it's one of them. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All in favor, then say aye. 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 We'll say time. Eight, we have a bunch. We have a bunch of things to sign. Yeah. Uh,